primarily of uh, first-generation immigrants and their families. And so it's very important to us to understand the, their experiences here in Halifax, in Nova Scotia, and in Canada, and to be able to communicate those to the wider community. Uh, by way of background, I'm a practicing lawyer at Stuart McKelvey, and I, along with my husband, Shaheen Sayadi, uh, founded a theater company, One Light Theater, and a, a multi-arts festival, Prismatic, and we're now the resident company at Alderney Landing. And to give you some context, we're the first culturally diverse theater company in Canada to take up residence at a purpose-built theater facility. The first, 2013. We're very proud to be there, but I think it's long overdue. We're happy that the first has happened here in Nova Scotia and here in Halifax, Dartmouth, uh, but there's a lot of work to be done. The Prismatic Festival is coming up in August. It showcases culturally diverse and Aboriginal artists. It's the only kind of multi-arts festival uh, of its kind in Canada. And again, you know, for such a diverse country with so much talent, it really speaks volumes that it wasn't until 2010 that such a festival existed in Canada. And we've been very grateful and honored to have the support of all levels of government, and also recently we've had the support of significant uh, corporate sponsors such as TD Bank Group, TELUS, of course our friends at Cresco who have been with us really since day one and we're always, always happy to have them along with us. But it, it shows that there's a change coming in our community when all levels of government and major corporations start to take interest in the work of culturally diverse and Aboriginal artists, something is changing. And that's a really positive change. Uh, I'm really honored to be a part of that change and to be working with members of our community and people across the country to bring more arts and culture. But Prismatic and our work is not just about new foods, new dances, new music. It's really about the health of our communities because People need to see themselves represented everywhere. They need to see their traditions, their languages, their way of understanding the world put up on our main stages, in our art galleries, and in our concert halls. If we don't put all cultures in our community at an equal footing and center, what happens is that we're telling our immigrant communities and our minority communities quite clearly that you are not Canadian enough. You are not Nova Scotian enough. You are not Haligonian enough to be on stage at Canada Day, at Natal Day, at our civic events. That is what we are communicating, and it's not subtle to the people who are on the other end of that message, as unintentional as it may be from the people who are making the decisions. And so, I'm asking those of you who are here tonight to think very carefully when you are in a position of power and you are making decisions and you are seeking out advice to actively work against creating a second class of citizens in our community. To think very carefully about who and what we are representing as our community and what we are telling those people in our community that we ask to come here and to join us. When we ask them to come here and to join us, it can't be only at our universities or in our workplaces. It has to be everywhere for everyone. And so that is a, a piece of my work, and I know that that relates to some of the work that our guests are doing. Uh, when I was introduced, it said that I was going to speak about uh, immigration law. I don't practice immigration law, and so I did some research, and I wanted to bring some things to your attention. At, and, Really, it's things that I think a lot of people in this room know about, but many other Canadians don't. There has been some very significant changes in the recent months to uh, how immigrants and visitors to our country are treated that I think will shock a number of you, and, and I hope it does because I think this is the only way to draw attention to it. In September 2013, between September and December 2013, the Canadian government now requires that Citizens of 30 countries around the world, when they apply for visas, any kind of visa, student visa, visitor visa, work visa, even if they've had a visa before and they've been to Canada before, 
every one of them must now submit biometrics, which means they have to provide fingerprints to the Canadian government. And it's not enough to just have the fingerprints and enclose it in your application and to mail your application in. You must go to an approved Canadian office to provide these biometrics. Now what is more shocking still is that of the 30 countries that require this, 12 do not have Canadian embassies that provide this service. Now what does this tell you? This is actively discouraging and preventing people from obtaining visas to come to Canada. Of those 12 countries, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan. That makes up almost the majority of people who attend this mosque. And that means when my mother-in-law, my 70-year-old mother-in-law, the grand grandmother to my children, wants to come and visit her grandchildren, she has to travel from Shiraz, Iran, to Turkey. She has to attend at the Canadian Embassy. She has to submit to the humiliation of being fingerprinted as if she were a criminal. She has to then return to Iran, perhaps return to Turkey if they want to interview her, and maybe, maybe she will get a visa. And she will have to do this each and every time she wants to come to Canada to visit her family. This is every student applying for a visa. This is every employee that you want to bring to Canada to provide expertise. This happened months ago and nobody talks about it. Why? Because the people who have control over the information, over the decisions, it doesn't affect them. Your grandmothers don't have to be fingerprinted to come and visit. Your employees live down the road. But that affects, that decision affects each, every person in this room. It affects their ability to make connections with their family. It affects their ability to bring employees here to work in their businesses. It affects their ability to bring people over to study at the universities. And people are not talking about this. People are deeply hurt, as you can imagine, by this decision. And I think they're equally hurt by it because it has happened so swiftly and without discussion and without any kind of backlash within Canadian citizenship. More recently, you may have heard about Bill C-24. Uh, this bill was passed just a few weeks ago at the end of June in our federal government. Uh, I urge you, because I only have a few minutes to talk about it, the Canadian Bar Association wrote very uh, plain language, easy to follow submissions about the consequences of this bill. You can find it if you Google Canadian Bar Association Bill C-24. It looks like this. I urge you, please go find it and read it. In Canada, despite all the hurdles and tests and difficulties to become a citizen, once you become a citizen, you are equal to all other citizens. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter what your life was before. If you come and you make it and you become a citizen, you are equal. There was one, until last month, there was one difference between myself and my husband as Canadian citizens. And that was he could have his citizenship revoked if they found that he had materially misrepresented himself in his application for citizenship. That was it, that was the only thing. Now, with Bill C-24, they have introduced a number of new ways to revoke citizenship, and to revoke it not only from people who have immigrated to Canada, but to revoke it from people like my child. Because my child has access to second citizenship, and they can revoke my daughter's citizenship because she could go to Iran. They have introduced the punishment of exile into Canada, which our Supreme Court has found to be unconstitutional and perhaps a violation of international human rights standards. They have introduced second-class citizenship. They have introduced something that Canadians should be shocked by, because this is the thin edge of the wedge. This is where we start to divide good Canadian citizens from other Canadian citizens, permanent Canadian citizens from temporary Canadian citizens, the ones that we really trust to be here and the ones maybe not so much. And this, we all know, history does not deal well with those countries that start to differentiate between their citizens. History does not deal well with countries that start to require biometrics and the gathering of unnecessary personal information from people based merely on where they live in the world. This is shocking in Canada, in a country that prides itself on multiculturalism, prides itself on immigration, prides itself on being open to the world, 
And in one short year, we have introduced two major changes to how we treat the citizens of our country and their families who live outside of our borders. And I am communicating to you that people are very, very upset by this. I'm upset, and I stand as a person of privilege. I was born in Canada. My citizenship is uh, less at risk. In fact, my citizenship, because I also have access to dual citizenship, is, is now compromised. But I can only imagine how this must feel to somebody who took that risk and brought their whole family to Canada and imagine that this would be a place of freedom and equality and where they could feel that they were safe and secure and could build a life here. And now, all of that is at risk by these changes to the laws. And so, I'm here tonight to convey to you that when our communities stand and fight against these changes, when they come together and they petition the government for change, they challenge it in the courts, they go to the media, all Canadians must stand together. All Canadians must see that this is shocking, that this is unacceptable, that this is not the Canada that we want to live in, and it's certainly not the community that we are contributing to. And so I urge you to read more about these changes. Everything is available very simply on Canadian government websites, all the immigration information, all the changes to Bill C uh, C24, please go and read them. Please be there with the community when they fight against this. It's absolutely necessary that we reverse these kinds of trip paths that we're headed down and put Canada back to where it belongs. Thank you very much.